Today we're going to talk about ways of assessing neurological disorders. Um, and some of these are more medical in orientation, including taking EEGs. Um, in this particular example, you see the ways that EEG patterns, electroencephalogram patterns, vary in different, uh, different stages of sleep. There are also physiological memory or measures. This is a CT scan of both a healthy brain on the right and Terry Chavo's uh, brain. Remember, she's a woman who we discussed in the section on eating disorders. Uh, she had a stroke and was on life support for a number of years, dying in 2005. And you notice the, the very large ventricles here. Those very large ventricles, you know, relative to those seen in this brain, relative to those seen in this brain, indicate a loss of brain tissue. You can also see that loss of brain tissue by seeing some of the hills and valleys, the gyrus and sulci, in, in the brain here, you know, that you can't see in this much more packed brain. In this, in this uh, figure, you see an MRI um, that picks up magnetic and radio waves or uses mag magnetic and radio waves. And notice that right after the stroke, there is really no evidence of, of brain damage. And yet, four, four days later, you're seeing this real damage. In general, we want to intervene as early as possible so that there, you know, that that damage does not cause long-lasting cognitive, neurological, and intellectual damage. Uh, here's another MRI. In this case, um, you know, we're seeing a healthy brain. You know, here, here are the eyes. In this screen, you see the brain of Cecil Clayton who was executed in 2015. Um, he had experienced some brain damage in the course of his work, um, damaging the left frontal lobe, so the eyes are here on this. Now remember the frontal lobe, and that's an important piece that we're going to be talking about in this unit, the frontal lobe is associated with executive functioning, the ability to make decisions, to plan, uh, to control impulses, um, and there are some increased problems with frontal lobe uh, processing in, um, in people with Alzheimer's d disease. He actually killed a police officer and the attorney argued that he should not be put to death for this offense, that the reason that he did so was related to this brain damage. Unfortunately, the jury did not, did not buy that. Um, watch this video on neuropsych assessment. First of all, I think the I think you should be focusing on two different kinds of things in this video. One, pay attention to some of the deficits that this woman you know, is demonstrating. Um, she has some real pervasive deficits. Um, I'd also like you to be thinking about some of the things that we talked about in terms of normal and not normal memory. I'd also want you to think about, as he's asking questions, what kinds of things is he attempting to, to discover from her? And what kinds of deficits do you believe she's showing? 
as she's doing that. Pay attention to what strengths she, she has. And he's clearly looking for strengths here. And finally, notice how he responds throughout. He is patient. He is non-judgmental. He's supportive. Um, he's looking for strengths, even in a woman who is really profoundly um, impaired. Um, and he uses some of these things in order to help her identify or help the family identify ways of improving treatment um, in the future. Now, when we're thinking about assessing neurological dis uh, dysfunction, we're thinking about a number of different kinds of things. So sometimes there is an interview that may be done with that particular person or with family members. We're going to be thinking about, is there a change in level of functioning? If, for example, the woman in the last video has, has been functioning at this level throughout her entire lifespan, we would, instead of diagnosing Alzheimer's, would be thinking about diagnosing mental retardation. So on the exam, you know, one of the rule outs that you might look at is, is this mental retardation or is this, you know, is this uh, Alzheimer's or some other kind of dementia? You want to think about, are there any known precipitators? So one of the things that this might be is some sort of very profound depression that is really affecting her cognitively. You want to think about how did she function in the past? How did she function at school? How did she function at work? Um, was she able to complete, you know, do her, her um, checkbook? Was she able to wash clothes and cook and get herself dressed? And you might ask both her and her family. And when possible, you're going to get old test data. So sometimes it's possible to get test data from a school, for example, particularly if I'm doing an assessment on someone younger um, and, you know, am able to get that information from a school or the university that they attended. I'm also going to be thinking about measures on, on behavioral measures. So one of the kinds of things that I might do is look at the verbal and performance uh, measures on an intelligence task, such as the waste. I'm going to be thinking about short-term memory. So I'm, you know, you notice in the video that he asked her both to repeat those three, three words, and then he asked her less than a minute later. So he's at that point asking for short-term memory. If she had been able to do that, then he would have, would have asked her again maybe a half an hour later if she can recall that information. If she couldn't, he might cue her, you know, and help her, you know, see if those cues might help her um, retrieve that information. He's going to look at her language use, her ability to, to respond to tasks in a flexible way. You know, so can she approach the task in this way and then change it? He's going to think about her strengths and weaknesses. So, for example, he noticed that while she has some real weaknesses, she's still able to read. And then think about whether this kind of information, all of this information pulled together, helps us to understand about her neurological, um, any neurological dysfunction. So here are a couple of different measures. This is a Ray complex uh, figure. What is done here is first asking the person to copy it. And that's a somewhat difficult task in and of itself. And then, if that person is able to do that, they have identified that they have the visual skills, that the 
they have the motor skills to do so. Then, can they draw that, that figure from memory? Which is a much more difficult task. What kinds of errors and how many errors is this person making? Also, you know, thinking about reading and oral memories. So, can a person read these words in some time after the leader, etc.? And then I might ask someone to repeat them. So, I might say, in some time. Can you repeat that? And notice how the sentences become longer with, uh, with time. So they're becoming much more difficult kinds of tasks. What kind of memory do you have that would allow you to do that? So what should you do now? What I would do is go back to the, to the video that I referenced earlier in this in this particular video and really pay attention to the neuropsych testing that that woman is uh, administered and think about what's going on there. What is he looking for? What is necessary in order to perform that task well? And then think about how do you know that? And take care.